GCS 210 control system consists of three sensors. You have two LR210s, one mounted on the left and one on the right, with the coil cord coming off the center of the machine. The angle sensor is mounted on the left side of the head as seen here. The boom cord brings power and communication out to the head. The boom cable is mounted here and connects to the head harness. The head harness routes in the center of the head, bringing power and communication to your left receiver, your angle sensor, which follows the hydraulic lines all the way up to the absolute valve, and to your right receiver. There's also a can terminator. The can terminator is for the to satisfy the communication. The S240 boom cord is routed along with the hydraulic hoses. It comes back to the upper frame. The connection's here. There's an adapter assembly that goes between the S240 harness and the boom cord. To bypass the harness, disconnect the boom cord and connect your auxiliary coil cable from there to the connection at the head. The GCS 210 operating system consists of, the control system consists of two main parts. The first part is the GCS 210 display. The display software is identical to the SXPD. The display enclosure is identical to the SXPD. Uh, after every job, you'd want to disconnect the display from the machine. There's a couple quick disconnects on the back, and the connector is unscrewed and removed here and stored with the cap and lanyard. The second part of the control system is the operator control interface. This box consists of all the switches necessary to, con to run the control system. Over here, you have your manual elevation raise-lower switches, which are used for jog operations and raising the head up and down. Below that are your left and right reset switches. Your last two switches here are the automatic control buttons, pressing the switches cycles between auto and manual control. Your last switch is the timed raise and timed lower switch. In the center of the control box is a small display with a number readout. This display is capable of displaying fault codes for both switches and valve drive faults. You can see that the, um, there's an active button, which is here, and there's a stored fault button here. Pressing the switch brings you between the two different areas, showing you what, what has occurred on the machine. In the first part of the number, the SPN, tells you which device had the issue. The next number, the FMI, tells you what type of fault it is. Was it an open fault, a short to ground fault, or a short to battery fault? The last number, the OC, is the occurrence count. How many times has it happened in the uh, history of the machine? These faults can all be erased using the CAT service tool. Here's the wire harness routing for the GCS 210 system on the S240. You have the switch box here and the operator seat. Now underneath both are where the electrical harness is routed and the components are stored. The switch box harness routes here and then comes back and loops underneath the operator seat. Underneath the operator seat is where the control for all the switches, the valve drive, and the grade control is stored. This plate here is special for mounting the controller and the controller is mounted underneath the seat. The harness plugs into this controller and then routes to all the devices. Here you have your valve drive. There's six valve cables, two for SLS, two for your left elevation, and two for your right elevation. Those plug into the grade control manifold, your elevations and your SLS. Back over here are the rest of your connections. This connection here is for your display. Provides power and communication to it. These connections provide 
power to the harness. They come from the fuse panel. The fuse panel can either be mounted underneath the control console and the steering wheel or back on this plate. This is a switch power fuse. When the key switch is turned on, this provides power to all your devices, your switch box, the angle sensor, both receivers, the controller. Here's a connection for 3D. If you order the 3D install kit, that's where you plug in your 3D foot switch. There's one connection here for the rotation. And this detects when, you, when you're rotating the machine and sends a signal to the GCS system to prevent column guard from enabling. For 3D connections with the 240 GCS 210 system, you'll connect the target to the right side of the machine, to the same connection that you'd have for the right uh, receiver. The angle sensor stays the same, and the sonic tracer connects to the left bulkhead connector. When you're running 3D on the GCS 210 system on the S240, connection for the USB CAN module is connected right here into the center of the display.